Tag TV brings you daily news bulletin from India. Breaking news and views from India. Good evening. Welcome to South Asia Newsline. I'm Skyrim Zimik. Here are the top stories we're tracking for you on Monday, the 15th of June. India's Interior Minister chairs all party meet over COVID-19 situation in Delhi. Doctors protest over unjust transfers, lack of facilities in Gilgit Baldistan amid the pandemic. And Nepal's National Assembly endorses proposal to update country's new map. And now for all the details. India's Interior Minister Amit Shah on Monday held an all-party meeting to discuss the management of the coronavirus situation in the national capital region. Capital New Delhi has the third highest COVID-19 count in the country with more than 41,000 cases reported so far. India's Interior Minister Amit Shah on Monday assured that there will be coronavirus testing for all in capital New Delhi during an all-party meeting to discuss the management of the coronavirus situation in the national capital region. The coronavirus tests per day in Delhi will reach 18,000 in the next few days, the Interior Minister said. Most parties cutting across party lines had demanded more testing. Shah also said a committee was examining fixing the cost of testing and treatment for coronavirus patients. With more than 24,000 active cases, Delhi, which has a population of 20 million, is the third worst affected after the provinces of Maharashtra and Tamil Nadu. कि टेस्टिंग का अधिकार तमाम लोगों को होना चाहिए टेस्टिंग और ट्रेसिंग की जो पॉलिसी पूरे विश्व ने अपनाई है उसी के तहत इलाज हो सकता है और देश के आज ये गृहमंत्री ने स्वीकार किया है। India is the fourth worst affected country in the world, with cases steadily increasing. On Monday, India's COVID-19 cases tally reached 332,424, with 9,520 deaths reported so far. Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi had imposed a nationwide lockdown in late March that has since been loosened. The number of confirmed COVID-19 cases in Pakistan rose to 144,478 on Monday after new infections were confirmed in the country. The country has seen its coronavirus epidemic explode in the last two weeks, seeing multiple consecutive days of record rises in cases and deaths. Pakistan's COVID-19 cases tally on Monday reached to 144,478 after the country recorded its highest number of coronavirus cases in a single day on Sunday. Capital Islamabad has so far reported 8,569 cases. Till now, Punjab province with 54,138 cases alone remains to have reported the highest number of coronavirus cases in the country. In order to make people aware of the seriousness of the crisis, Minister for Planning Asad Omar on Sunday said that the number of coronavirus cases in Pakistan could cross a million mark by end July. He urged people to get serious about the disease and take precautions. March ke was se humne ye safar shuru kiya tha. 26 February ko pehla case aaya tha Pakistan mein corona ka. मई के वस्त तक दो महीने पाकिस्तानी कॉम ने डिसिप्लिन का मुजाहरा किया बड़ी अच्छे तरीके से हम चलते रहे उसके बाद थोड़ी डिसिप्लिन के अंदर बल्कि थोड़ी नहीं काफी कमी हमें देखने में नजर आई है दोबारा आपसे ताकीद कर रहे हैं ये आपकी हिफाजत के लिए है पाकिस्तान हैज सीन इट्स कोरोना वायरस एपिडेमिक एक्सप्लोड इन द लास्ट 2 वीक्स सीइंग मल्टीपल कंसेक्यूटिव डेज ऑफ रिकॉर्ड डेथ्स एंड केस राइजेस अक्रॉस द कंट्री pushing hospitals in major cities to the brink of their allocated capacity. The real number of infections is likely far higher, with Pakistan currently testing about 25,000 people a day, which is half the number of daily tests recommended by the World Health Organization. Moving on, a protest was held recently by doctors and other healthcare staff in Gilgit-Baldistan against 
unjust transfer orders issued to them by authorities for raising concerns over lack of facilities to deal with suspected coronavirus patients. Scores of doctors recently held a protest in Hunza Valley of Gilgit Baldistan against unjust transfer orders issued to them by the health authorities in the illegally occupied region amid coronavirus outbreak. They blamed they were being transferred for raising concerns over lack of proper facilities, including mask and PPA kits to the health care staff who have been dealing with suspected coronavirus patients. The protesting doctors said they will not comply with the transfer orders and demanded they be provided protective gear. इस वक्त हमारे आइसोलेशन सेंटर पे और मुख्तलिफ स्क्रीनिंग में लैब में जहां पे भी हमारा काम कर रहे लोग फ्रंट लाइन पे उनको कोई सहूलत नहीं दी जा रही है जब मैंने आवाज उठाया तो मेरी बदतमीजी हो गई है और मुझे वो उन्होंने ट्रांसफर किया है Gilgit Baltistan has reported 1129 coronavirus cases with 16 deaths so far and the cases continue to rise. Absence of medical facilities has remained a matter of grave concern since long. But the authorities in the illegally occupied region have been apathetic to the sufferings of locals and healthcare staff alike. In news from Afghanistan, family of Abdul Aziz Mofley The religious leader who lost his life in a mosque attack in Afghan capital Kabul last Friday has urged proper investigation in the incident. The attack was the second mosque attack in less than 2 weeks in Kabul that left four people including the religious leader dead. The family of Abdul Aziz Mofle, the religious leader who lost his life in the Sher Shah Suri mosque attack in Afghan capital Kabul last Friday, has urged the incident requires a proper investigation. Otherwise, the government will be blamed for the killing. The explosion at the mosque happened during Friday prayers. The attack was the second mosque attack in less than two weeks in Kabul, which left four people, including the religious leader, dead. The Ministry of Interior Affairs sees the Taliban's hand behind the attack. However, the militant group has denied any involvement. This comes as the United States is attempting to broker peace talks between the Afghan government and the insurgent Taliban to end 18 years of war. The Islamic State group also has a presence in the country and has carried out large-scale attacks in Kabul in recent months. Nepal's parliament upper house on Sunday endorsed a proposal to discuss the constitution amendment bill to update the country's new political map that includes three strategically key territories which are also claimed by India. Nepal's upper house of parliament on Sunday endorsed a proposal to discuss the constitution amendment bill to update the country's new political map that includes three strategically key indian territories this came a day after the lower house of parliament unanimously passed the constitution amendment bill to approve the new map which includes indian territories of kalapani lepu lake and limpia dura The time duration of 72 hours has been allocated for the members of the National Assembly to file complaints on the bill if they have any. After the National Assembly passes the bill, it will be submitted to the President for authentication, after which it will be incorporated in the Constitution. New Delhi has said that the updated map is not based on historical facts and evidence and termed the claims by Nepal as artificial enlargement. India's Foreign Ministry spokesperson Anurag Srivastava also said that the move is violative of the current understanding to hold talks on outstanding boundary issues. Family members and a victim in India's Bihar province recalled the brutality and intimidation by Nepal security personnel who resorted to unprovoked firing on a group of people last Friday leaving one dead. They call the incident unfortunate and shocking. A victim and family members in India's Bihar province recounted the horrific brutality and intimidation by Nepal security personnel who on June 12th had resorted to unprovoked firing on a group of people. 
a victim named Lagan Kishore who was at the border with his family to meet his daughter-in-law, a Nepali national and her family, said he was detained by Nepal's armed police force or APF who dragged him to the other side of the border and hit him with rifle. He asserted the Nepali police force even abused his son and later resorted to firing. APF opened fire on June 12th at the Lalbandi Jankinagar international border in which three persons sustained gunshot injuries, out of which one even died. सब भेंट करने के लिए अलग अपना बच्ची से अमर फैमिली सब परिवार सब तो हुआ सब पोता पोती सब लेकर गए वहाँ भेंट करें के लिए तो हमको अलग ठीक ही सब गए लिए तो तंका देर के बाद हम गए लिए कल जैसे समझी से भेंट कर लें जोले में गए लिए जोले में हमारा लड़का के मार रहा लग दूसरा डंटा मार लग हमारा लड� से हमारा बचपन के कला मार ली कौन घाट भी गार कर दल के हमारे पुत्र हुआ है समझी है सब हैं टूट कर याल ची उतने कह राल ची तोले में हमरो दुचार डंडा मार दल। Meanwhile, Nepali police have claimed that Lagan Kishore, who was taken into custody following the firing by APF and handed over to the Indian security forces at no man's land on June 13, was detained for trying to snatch a weapon from one of their personnel during an altercation. The incident comes amid border row between India and Nepal over disputed territories of Lipu Lake, Kalapani and Limpiadhura, which both claim their own. India resumed border trade with Bangladesh this past weekend through the Petrapol integrated check post in West Bengal province after over two months of coronavirus lockdown. The countries had halted transportation and silt their borders to prevent the rise in the number of coronavirus cases. India resumed border trade with Bangladesh this past weekend through the Petropol Integrated Check Post at East and West Bengal State's Fulbari border after over two months of coronavirus lockdown. Anxious to revive the economy, after a nearly 70-day lockdown, the government this week opened most public transport, offices and malls, even though health officials said the country was weeks away from flattening the curve of infections. The countries had halted transportation and sealed their borders to prevent the rise in the number of coronavirus cases that has infected over 7.4 million people across the world. Taking all the uh, norms and precautions of uh, COVID-19, from today onwards, trade has been resumed from IC Food Body. India shares 4,096 kilometers of border with Bangladesh, of which West Bengal has the most of 2,216 kilometers. The North Bengal frontier has a border of 1,070 kilometers with the country and has a number of porous areas. A sweet shop in India's eastern Kolkata city has come out with an innovative immunity sandesh, a special sweet to cater to boost its customers' immunity during the coronavirus pandemic. The owner of the sweet shop claims the special sweet is very effective in improving the body's resistance against the contagion. A sweet shop in India's eastern Kolkata city is selling immunity shondash, special sweets prepared with medicinal properties in a bid to boost immunity against the fast-spreading coronavirus. The shondash at the sweet shop is made using 15 different Indian herbs and spices with immunity-boosting properties. Owner of the shop claimed the sweets are very effective in improving the body's resistance against the contagion and customers are responding well to the idea. We are selling an idea. We are selling an idea to uh, attract people towards these Indian spices so that you can, they can have them regularly and boost their immunity. The coronavirus has infected around 332,424 people in India and left over 9,520 dead. The deadly virus has no non-scientific cure and governments across the world are struggling to control the spread of the pandemic. Well, that's all we have for you from South Asia this evening. Now, viewers can watch the show on SouthAsianewsline.com 
You can also visit us on facebook.com slash sasianewsline and follow us on Twitter at sasianewsline. That's all in tonight's edition. We'll see you same time tomorrow. Good night. Subscribe Tag TV YouTube channel and press the notification button.